Spencer ain't used to not being the top player on the team. Olivia is making her way within her journalism career. And Jordan got wise words for Spencer James. What's good, y'all? She gets this Erica Vane coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another All American video. In this video, we are talking about episode 10 with my full breakdown from season four. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my All American content because I kind of got like the dopest All American like content content out here i'm just saying like i ain't trying to toot my own horn but beep beep honey we went live last night and i had a special surprise interview that i was able to share with you all i'm so excited and grateful for the opportunity to chat with corey hardrick who is coach marcus turner on all american homecoming please be on the lookout for additional interviews i will be dropping deeper into the all american universe because as i continue to create content i do want to tap in in with the creatives who are helping bring these beautiful stories to life and again hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any other exclusive tea okay and if you feel it extra froggy become a member of the channel by clicking the join button and get access to exclusive lives exclusive interviews and additional content but without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this breakdown so the theme for this episode is pre-season they are definitely in all systems go mode Spencer is starting up with training for the football team and he cannot seem to get this schedule to align with what he is is used to and one thing I want to say y'all that this episode was so true to life it sent me back to my freshman season my freshman year in college I've said this on numerous times I'm going to continue to say it. it's probably one of the reasons why I'm so obsessed with the all-american universe I was a collegiate athlete and when I tell y'all they got this right they got this 100% right. You are literally, one day you are a high school graduate living your best life, frolicking about. The next day you are given a schedule, you're given a list of to-dos, you're given expectations for pushing yourself physically, whether it's conditioning or weight training or drills or whatever, and you really do have to hit certain benchmarks. And watching Spencer struggle throughout this episode to make it to certain things on time, to show up and show out, when in all actuality he really just needs to show that he can be consistent and him thinking that he needed to bring one thing to the table when in all actuality he needed to bring another I thought it was so beautiful and again I think that they did a really great job with it it becomes very clear early on that the head coach ain't taking no showboaters he is not one of those coaches that was recruiting Spencer before y'all he literally is all about the fundamentals show me that you solid show me that you stable and I was on Twitter and I saw a few people were pissed at this coach felt like the coach was being mean to Spencer but I actually didn't see anything wrong again it really feels like they were trying to be as authentic as possible and this is literally how it goes when you are a freshman coming into a program one you do need to impress the coach the head coach one thing that Spencer has working against him is that he wasn't the actual head coach choice right so there may be other wide receivers who were recruited as well or it could be an upperclassman or returning player who the coach has their eye on so because Spencer Spencer was brought in by one of the assistant coaches he's not necessarily going to be that person's priority the head coach's priority as we saw the assistant coach coach Boone was definitely having Spencer's back in this episode and it made sense because he was his select right so again that's 100% true to life but when it comes to trying to make an impression on the head coach one of the things that you want to show is not necessarily that you can do tricks and that you could be Deion Sanders and that you could give a good show but to show that you are solid that you can hit your right 98% of the time that you can you know improve with speed ever so slightly that you can catch the same thing the same ball the same way every single time that shows dependability when we get the scene where the coach is talking about oh we don't take no showboat in here that is exactly what he means he literally is saying that it's not about the glitz or the sparkle or the whatever that kind of stuff is going to come from great opportunities within games but can you do the fundamentals well can you consistently catch can you consistently route can you consistently I don't know all the football jargon y'all I would have to give y'all a whole bunch of basketball analogies because that's what I actually play or volleyball but that's what it's all about and it, and it was so interesting watching Spencer go through that journey of awakening in this episode I love that he went back and actually apologized to the coach and was like okay I totally see what you're saying I definitely need to adjust and I'm going to show you I'm not going to try to tell you I'm going to show you what I can do I can show you what I can bring to the table and that was really dope it really put him in 
in a in a better place like not that i thought that spencer was not being humble but it put him in a more humble place him and him realizing that he really do have to begin again and speaking to that like i spoke about this on a live last night but you really do have to begin again as a college recruit once you arrive there you are no longer the best person at the school you're no longer the best person in your city maybe even the best person in your state as i mentioned like i had the privilege or work to gain the notoriety at you know at my high school as well as in my city in baltimore during my time as being this girl who played basketball that people knew outside of my school like when it came to tennis i was ranked in the state like when it came to volleyball i was ranked in the state. like i was definitely well known but when you think about it y'all everybody is that so when they did the whole everybody is like spencer james i was like exactly and it's something that they don't actually tell you before you get there so you don't even register it until you get amongst all of the other great people from all of these other great places and then it's like oh my god spencer is literally he has literally climbed this mountain in high school and became the top player the best of the best all hail spencer right like that was definitely what it was given before and guess what y'all typically in life the moment that we are at the peak of one mountain we turn around and look and we're at the base of another and that's exactly what's going on with spencer he is at the base of his collegiate careers mountain and now he just gotta buckle up and start the climb again and we know that spencer has the work ethic to be able to do it however we get to see in this episode that he starts to question that a little bit and honestly it made for a beautiful episode i love what they are doing with his storyline i ain't gonna hold y'all them coming back from hiatus has been dragging just a little bit and i wasn't necessarily too sure of what they were trying to do but now that we're starting to get into more meat and potatoes of what their collegiate storyline is going to be i am so very excited to see it continue to play out now as spencer is struggling with trying to hit all of his times and be on time for practices and different breakout sessions position meetings etc olivia is watching spencer struggle has a conversation with jordan this episode and is presented with the idea that maybe their relationship could be getting in the way or could be adding additional pressure to spencer so by the end of the episode olivia actually comes to spencer and is like yo maybe i'm adding a little extra maybe we should dial it back but spencer unequivocally says no that ain't it this is all about me everybody has the same schedule i have to make an adjustment and again this is just where we get the reconfirmation of he him realizing that he's at the base of a new mountain and he got to get the climbing so Olivia is making it another episode y'all i do believe that this episode was given some type of foreshadowing i think that this is a conversation that's going to continue to present itself in this episode olivia was a little bit more anxious to get a story or get assigned more at her new job at the la tribune but she's not necessarily struggling as much as we saw spencer struggling and i could definitely see them revisiting this conversation around slowing down or taking a break or creating some space if and when her story starts to get a little bit more hectic as well one of the things that we also have to think about is that both of them have yet to actually start school i believe this is the beginning of all of that like they haven't even gotten fully thrown into classes and all that might come with that i'm pretty sure olivia is going to join the school paper or some additional clubs so whilst olivia is hanging on and they are speaking and they're communicating and they are so healthy and beautiful i definitely felt while watching it that we were getting a little bit of foreshadowing and i wouldn't necessarily be mad because they both would maybe have this conversation and make this decision mutually but we gonna see now talking about jordan baker i want to take a second and gather him because while what he did say to olivia was true and i i love the fact that he was able to articulate if simone was here it would be a lot harder for me to balance and trying to you know sneak off and, and have my snack breaks with her versus actually just staying focused and doing what i have to do and be here that explains why we don't actually see him you know pining after simone or seemingly like he misses her that was a little nod to that as well as to establish like that's a very clear under like a clear thing that couples go through especially when they're you know doing long distance however they seem to be navigating it okay that's fine however when jordan had this conversation with spencer because he felt like spencer felt entitled and he felt like spencer was hoping that the coach was just going to play favorites and select him and put him in his good graces i was like all right now jordan give me your plate bro because no no i see what you're trying to do here and it's not given it's absolutely not given first of all spencer does not have a problem with working hard and pursuing greatness and achieving greatness you know why because he's done it
done it before. That is typically your problem. You know how we know that? Because you cry about it every six months when you see somebody else doing something great and now you want it. Spencer wasn't asking for the coach to give him preferential treatment. Spencer was just hoping to be seen in the same light that he was seen in high school. However, the stage has changed. So even if Spencer does have the same light, the stage is bigger. So guess what? That light don't shine as bright and he got to work a little bit harder to, to get a couple more lights on him. That's all that is. The fact that Jordan was kind of alluding to the to what he believed or maybe thought was Spencer got preferential treatment at high school or he was just selected as you know somebody playing favorites disgusted me because Jordan knows that Spencer worked his behind off. Jordan has spent countless times in, in his high school career not showing up for practice, being a poor leader. He was the captain and he wasn't the captain. He allows his emotions and personal traumas or dramas getting in the way of him as an athlete. Sometimes he's committed, sometimes he's not committed and that is not something that you can actually say about Spencer James. So the fact that he can actually utter out his mouth, oh the coach ain't playing favorites. It's like sir, nobody was playing favorites with Spencer before but they were playing favorites with you Mr. Coach's son Mr. Getting invited to the combine because I'm Coach's son Mr. Getting getting to walk on a red shirt or whatever you did for the all Platinum All-American game because you Coach's son like let's not do that Jordan now I understand that the writers had to get that dialogue off because Spencer needed to be confronted with the idea of this ain't what it used to be and while you could be good and all nobody's going to pat you up or just put you in a place to you you know highlight you if you're not actually the most stellar person on the team that's cool but what came out of Jordan's mouth I wasn't necessarily feeling it and it was definitely because it came out of Jordan's mouth and also happened in this episode Miss Tamia Cooper don't have nothing going on much like her daggone storyline so they have turned her storyline into the fact that she don't have nothing going on and she is running patience ragged worrying on her nerves in an attempt to try to be a little bit more passive and keep her out of her hair patience asked Layla to have Coop help out with the showcase which ultimately becomes a bomb that blows up in both of their faces because Coop turns into the manager from HE double hockey sticks y'all trying to tell Layla that patience now has this extensive writer for the showcase doesn't allow patience to go on before Kim Nitty because she's a star and she only opening up for Beyonce and some more which ultimately ends up in patience and Coop having a confrontation towards the end of the episode where patience just has to lay everything out on the line and let her know you're doing too much i need a break sorry scratch that she gives her a suspension <sighs> patience the breakup is coming child we know it's coming you know it's coming go ahead and rip the band-aid off was it just me or did anybody else feel like at some point in this episode they were about to break up every single couple and i was just like i can't believe they're about to do this now speaking on layla on Lil Lele, she had one of the best storylines of the episode aside from spencer because his was definitely strong but I definitely enjoy where we're going with Layla I said this on my live y'all but Layla is one of the most developed characters within the all-american universe and her character development is just so freaking consistent in this episode we get to see that her and Clay have been kicking it all summer having a really good time maybe a little bit too much fun and aren't necessarily clear on where they are and when Clay tries to get a little bit of clarity Layla makes it clear that she doesn't actually want anything serious with him and this is such a trauma response and I low-key love to see it because it's so true to her character. When we think about even last episode, she was hesitant to even go there and act on her feelings that she has for Clay because she didn't want to be going down the same road as her father. And she saw the negative impact. She saw, she felt the negativity around her father getting entangled with different artists and just making the whole music business really, really messy. And she didn't want to do that. She didn't want to be that. The same thing can be applied to what she's doing now and not wanting to pursue a official relationship with Clay because her last relationship, her last serious relationship where she actually allowed herself to fall in love and to be vulnerable and to give it all to something was with her relationship with Spencer. So it's Spencer's fault, y'all. Layla cannot move on. Layla cannot get into a, a new, healthy, strong relationship because she is terrified and I don't blame the girl. The last serious relationship she was in ended up in her boyfriend 
boyfriend professing his love to her best friend and keeping her in the dark in a fake relationship for four months it's giving me trauma as well and i'm not excited for her struggling with this but i am excited to see how she's going to come out of it and how her character is going to navigate and grow and heal from what happened because she we haven't really gotten to see her actually process it we've seen time pass we've seen her prioritize her relationship with olivia and get back to a really great place with olivia but we don't know how she was able to get over it we kind of went from the end of season three where she's telling spencer yo i just need time you're a great person i know that you're a great person you've always been a great person however this hurts and i just need time to now in season four being able to be around spencer and olivia register their relationship even in this episode y'all she was giving olivia advice on relationships and speaking about how sometimes it can be hard when you're trying to focus on a big thing but you also have a real relationship to dial in and, and give your energy to and as she was speaking on it i was just like i don't know if i like olivia and layla talking about relationships like it was giving me cringe not that they were saying anything cringe worthy it just i felt awkward for layla so and seeing how she responds to clay like wanting to make things more serious more official i'm just like oh ah girl this boy really really is into you however i completely understand your negative response because you have seen this before you have felt this before when you and spencer was solid when spencer was pursuing you he was given the same energy and it could definitely feel like giving a past relationship danger and she's going to try to avoid it but again a layla storyline the rest of this season is going to be standing up her you know record label if she's deciding to go to school because we haven't really gotten clear on if she's not going to school completely and then also her healing journey into another new healthy relationship because you definitely do deserve Lele. like i i want you to have you know your orgasms and whatnot sis great sex is cool but a dope relationship to go along with it is even better and you definitely deserve that now taking it back to spencer real quick y'all because i actually didn't touch upon the little scrimmage game that they have where spencer actually comes up short and is kind of a dud but then jordan steps in with isaiah and they actually show a, a, a thing or two <sighs> Personally, I just feel like it's Spencer putting too much pressure on himself that caused him to crack under said pressure. And I'm actually a little excited that Jordan gets to show off a little bit as well as Isaiah. I wasn't expecting to see Isaiah on this team. So even seeing him being a walk on as well, Jordan has his little buddy that he gets to navigate this whole process with. We are gonna have to wait for another few episodes to see if this is gonna be a, a thing of Spencer really, really struggling and Jordan really, really shining. I ain't even gonna hold y'all. I'm very new to seeing this. So so it feels like an anomaly versus the new norm. It is what it is. And other storylines that we didn't actually ask for, but I guess y'all excited about it. Billy Baker gets to be the new interim principal as Grace and Denise are scouring the school to try to find a replacement for Carter. And at first, Billy doesn't actually want it, but then ultimately he doubles back and asks for it because he don't want the random shop teacher to be his boss. I personally think that Grace should have been the next choice or hopefully she is the choice choice for permanent principal the fact that she didn't even think about herself i'm just like man what is you doing because the way that you have been involved the way that you have been helping the school to curate safe spaces for these kids and add an additional culture and perspective and fighting for them it makes 100 percent sense but okay we're gonna give billy baker the principal spot go ahead and give it to him for now child he don't actually care about it but so we're gonna see how he do and then in other other storyline news that i don't actually care about but y'all might asha got another girlfriend because jamie returns and while i think that jamie's storyline surrounding her lupus diagnosis and her navigating this autoimmune disease is brilliant and i can't wait to see more i kind of wish jamie was not introduced to the series by way of asher because i am still over asher and these love interests he is never short on a woman he's never short on a woman who wants to step in and help him and then he's also never short to jump to conclusions and then blame said woman for trying to be his savior when he's always crying and complaining about whatever he got going on in his life in the moment like sir and i guess we have this little bookies storyline brewing it's actually about to have some kind of gambling problem they all decide to stay in this daggone beach house and, and renew their lease throughout the year which personally to me is the only thing of this whole episode that made absolutely no sense when y'all are collegiate athletes especially collegiate athletes as freshmen you have to stay 
on campus. You don't get to just buy a beach house in Malibu and frolic about. That's not how this works. Your coach has to be able to have access to you at any time. She or he has to be able to check your room, check for curfews, monitor a lot of what's going on. So that to me was the only unrealistic thing because y'all trying to extend this lease and keep this beach house. When one, Spencer, last episode, wasn't you just sat tripping about needing to do this angry frog or whatever hippo energy drink sponsorship because you needed the money, but then you ultimately went back to this gym and decided to allow the gym to sponsor you, not giving you no money, but you so-called need the money, but now you about to extend the lease for a beach house for a whole year that you ain't even gonna be living in? Like, what is actually happening? And why are we going with so many of JJ's bad ideas? JJ reveals in this episode, y'all, that he actually don't wanna go to the NFL. He just wants to play football and have fun. And I'm just like, that's all fine and cute, but you should have walked on some way because that scholarship could have been given to an underprivileged student who, or a student athlete who actually needed it and can't afford to go to school. You running around here pissing away this opportunity, not showing up for practices, not showing up for meetings, and just completely disregarding the opportunity that it is to be a collegiate athlete. It's like, JJ, I love you, but your privilege is showing, baby, and I hate that for you. And y'all, I guess we're gonna get Asher back serving. He's quit working at the bookies for now so that he can get closer to Jamie and serve and then go to college. But also, Asher's storyline is given, what are you finna really do with yourself, sir? All right, I think that that's my full breakdown. It was a little long this time. Please be sure to go back and check out my live. We actually had an amazing time on live and I would love for you to join me every Monday night at 8.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I know it's a little late. However, we talk about both All-American and All-American Homecoming. This has been my All-American breakdown. My All-American Homecoming is to follow right behind this so that you have a ton of content to bench on the channel today. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications. Go ahead and drop four football emojis into your comments so that I know that you made it all the way to the end of this video. You a real one and I got to show you some extra special real love. Until the next one. Bye.